Okay, let me show you how to install Composer. Now, Composer is a dependency manager for um, PHP, and so we can, you can access it by going to getcomposer.org. And at the getcomposer.org site, it has everything you need to get started and to get running. Um, you can also look and browse packages from here, and you can find packages that you need. So, for example, Laravel, um, really popular framework, is actually a package within Composer. And so if you're getting started with com with Laravel, you're definitely going to need Composer in order to make your Laravel packages. But it doesn't just have to be Laravel. For example, there are all sorts of programs like um, Socialite. There are um, a really popular program called Monolog, which allows you to um, create log files and, some, and stuff like that. Um, there's a program I use for some REST um, RESTful development. It's called Gulp. Um, I'd have to double check. Gulp something. But anyway, um, there's tons and tons of packages available, thousands and thousands of packages, and Composer makes it really, really easy to manage these packages. To get started with Composer, we obviously need, need to install it. So I'm going to go back here to Get Composer, and um, we're going to click on Getting Started. Now, there's two, obviously you need to install this differently depending on what app, what um, operating system you're using. So Windows has their own installer, so if you click on Windows, you can see that all you really need to do is download this exe file and you can start um, using Composer right away. Just open up the exe file and just keep going. It's just like installing anything else. Now if you're running on Linux or Unix or OS X, then it's a little bit different. We have to use some use the command line but it's not that difficult. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So um, again, I'm running on OS X Yosemite, and you can see within here there's two ways to install it. There's locally and there's globally. Now locally really does not make a whole lot of sense to run Composer just locally. This is if you just wanted to have Composer installed for one little project, but that's a lot. this is a lot of work to go through to install it for one project. So you're going to be using Composer a lot, and so let's just get it on your computer so it can be used globally. So we're going to skip down here to globally, and you can see that all we really have to do is um, run these two little lines in the command line. Um, you can put this wherever you'd like, but this is kind of the recommended way of doing it, is using it the way they've got recommended here. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to actually download the Composer um, in installing program. So that's what this first line does. So we're going to open up Terminal. I've got Terminal in my dock, but if you don't have Terminal in your dock, you've never used it before, then you're going to have to go to your Applications, go to Finder, and then your Applications, come all the way down here to Utilities, and then in your Utilities you should have Terminal near the bottom of Utilities. You can either double click it from here. Um, if you're going to use it later, you can also store it down here in your dock, or I'm just going to go ahead and open it straight from the dock. Okay, once you install it, yours might be, if you've never opened it before, it's probably white with black text. I prefer the black background. That's just a, a minor, um, something you can do in settings. If you just go over to your preferences, um, you can change the theme that it uses. But it, it runs exactly the same. So from here, you can see that I'm in my default um, J. Curtis directory for my computer. We're going to go ahead, we're going to copy this first line, and we're going to paste it into the terminal. Now before I click enter, you can go ahead and probably just click enter, but I want to explain really quick what's happening. First thing, we're doing a curl request. Now curl request means we're going out to the internet, we're getting a URL, and we're actually going to be accessing it. It's like basically an HTTP request, and we're doing that from the terminal. So what's happening here is we're going out to the internet, and we're going to find, we're going to this URL, which is the installer for Get Composer. Um, it's going to download the installer for Get Composer, and it's going to do that using PHP. So that's what this line is saying. So as soon as we click enter, it's going to go out and start doing exactly that. So you can see here that it is um, all settings are correct for Composer. We're downloading the file, and then it was successfully installed. And then this is where it's currently installed to. So it installed it into my users directory, into my current user, J.A. Curtis, and it's just at the root, and it's called composer.far. So it's right at the root of the um, of my J.A. Curtis directory. And it says you can go ahead and use it. Just say php um, composer.far. So let's go ahead and try it. php composer.far and see if it works. Click enter. And whoa, it does work. All right, so let's open this up and make it a little bigger. And I'm going to scroll up. So um, we ran php composer.far. 
And what we're basically saying is use PHP to run this file called composer.far, and that's all it's doing. And so we're running it, and we get our nice little thing here. It shows us how we can use it, some available commands and everything like that. But what this does is it shows that it's working. So you can now start using Composer by just typing PHP composer.far and then whatever Composer commands you wanted to do, like any of these ones right here. The only problem with that is it's not very convenient. To remember to type PHP space composer.far, it's just not very, very convenient. And as frequently as we're going to be using this, we want to be able to just access it using Composer. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this file right here that's just sitting in this root directory and we're going to move it to somewhere where I can execute it without needing to do all of this extra stuff. And so that's what this second line is doing. It's saying we're going to move the composer.far file. We're going to move it from here and we're going to rename it um, just composer. So we're going to move, sorry, move composer.far from where it currently is and we're going to move it into user local bin. And then we're going to rename it from composer.far to just composer. And that way we're going to be able to access it easily in the terminal by just calling composer. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run that command. So we're going to say move composer.far, easy enough. And where are we going to store it? We're going to store it in user slash local slash bin. This is where all your, your terminal commands run. And then you're just, we're just going to call it composer. Now you could call it whatever, you can call it compose -y. you can call it compose a lot, you can call it um, whatever you want, you can call it your name. But it obviously doesn't make sense to do that. We're just going to call it Composer. Um, but what I wanted to do there is kind of indicate that whatever you put right here, you're actually indicating the name of the file. And that's what you're going to use to call it later. So we're just going to call it Composer. All right, click Enter. And it, you won't get any sort of confirmation, but you do know that it's working. Because what we're going to do is we're going to try it out. We're just going to type Composer now. And it should do the same thing that it did up here when we, write, when we wrote PHP Composer.far. So we'll click Enter. And as you can see, it was kind of hard to see because we already had it. I'm going to clear out my terminal. We'll do it one more time and you can tell. And you can see that it ran. So now we're using Composer like normal. So you have Composer all set up now. So you can see how easy that is to set up. Hopefully everything ran without any sort of errors. But if you did get any errors, I want to help you through those so that you can still get up and running with Composer. Now, the two most common errors that I have seen are one of these two. You'll either run the command and it will say error access denied or something along those lines. And so if you get that kind of error, go ahead and click on the box in the top and it'll take you to another video specifically addressing that problem. Um, below the, the other error that you'll get is sometimes it will say error, no such file or directory. And if you do get that error, I want you to click down on the, the second box below and that will take you to the video that explains that in a lot more detail. Okay, so hopefully you can, with one of these errors, if you do get an error, you can go ahead and get, get the help you need. Otherwise, I want to thank you for watching the video. Go ahead and follow me at jacurtis.com. I've got some incredible content for working with Composer, Laravel, marketing, and all sorts of great stuff. Um, I like to keep it up to date. Um, we Also, don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe with the video, all that great stuff. Um, and good luck with Composer.